Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John in chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Good morning. We're recording this on a snowy morning here in the borders, but it's lovely to be with you. And so let's think about this passage that we've just read. So Lord, we just pray that you will speak to us, that we will hear your voice with what you want to say to us in our own situation. Amen. I do love a wedding. When an invitation drops through the door, I'm already planning what I'm going to wear. It's also a great excuse for a new dress and maybe some shoes too. Today's story from John's Gospel is all about a wedding that Jesus, his mum Mary, and his disciples were invited to. It took place in an out-of-the-way out country village called Cana in Galilee. The whole village came to the wedding. And yes, I mean the whole village, plus aunts, uncles, cousins and second cousins, friends and friends who brought along other friends. It was a real celebration that would go on for days and days. Not just a marriage ceremony, a slap up dinner and a keli as we have it here in Scotland, but various traditional customs and gatherings of groups which would all make for a great party. Of course, food and wine were the key to making the party go with a swing. But two or three days in, the wine started running low. It was the servants who noticed what was happening. They were responsible for filling and refilling the glasses. The best wine had been consumed. They were now down to the cheap plonk. You know, the stuff you buy on holiday and when you get it home, it never tastes quite as good. Eventually, however, even with the servants trying to ration it, by day five, the wine ran out. In Jewish culture, this was an absolute disaster. Nothing would be remembered about this wedding except the story of how the wine ran out. The shame for the groom's fam family would be gossiped about all over the place for years to come. Now, it just happened that Mary had been people watching. She noticed the rising panic of the servants the back and forth to the chief steward as the wine supplies dwindled. They were getting desperate. 
was then that Mary, seeing their need, gave Jesus a nudge in the ribs and said, They have no wine. Jesus replied, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? In other words, keep your nose out of other people's business. And then he went on to say, My hour has not yet come. Confusing, something we'll talk about in future weeks. Mary, however, determinedly pursued it and went over to the servants and pointing to Jesus, told them, do whatever he tells you. To cut a long story short, Jesus told the servants to fill six huge stone water jars, which were over in the area where the guests could freshen up before eating. They were to fill them with water right to the brim. Then Jesus told them to take a jug of the liquid to the chief steward to taste. He swallowed a mouthful. It was the best wine he'd ever drunk. Phew! What a relief! The bridegroom's family had saved face. Now that wedding was remembered as the one which kept the best wine until last. But for those who witnessed what happened, Jesus, his mother and the servants, and if it had taken place in Downton Abbey, it would have happened downstairs in the kitchen. It was remembered for another reason. It was the day when God's glory was revealed in his son, Jesus of Nazareth, through the sign of the water turned to wine, giving his disciples reason to believe in him. I wonder then what this first miracle, this first sign, as John calls it, shows us about God. Now, there are a number of themes we could reflect on in this story, but as I prepared, what stood out to me was how Mary saw a need, told Jesus about it, and he responded, albeit reluctantly at first. But that's a whole other story for another time. As we look around us, as we watch the news reporting stories of what's going on in the world, as we receive an anxious telephone call or email, as we talk with our friends and families, we see and hear of the needs of others. And we have needs of our own too. Every week in our intercessions and our recorded services, we bring some of these needs to God. Every week we pray. Prayer, though, does not just belong in church or in a service, nor is it only the chosen few who can pray. Prayer, that lifeline to God, is available to us all. It's the most natural thing in the world for us to do. Although I have to add, as with the miracle, I don't know how it works. However, I'm sure every one of us at some time in our lives has prayed, appealing for help, possibly, to some named or unnamed God, often in a moment of crisis. A recent paper from the University of Copenhagen titled In Crisis We Pray stated that during March 2020, as the COVID-19 pandemic began to hit Europe badly, internet searches on how to pray skyrocketed. Following April, the Church of England set up a call-in prayer line and in the first 48 hours, they received more than 6,000 calls. In the wedding story, the crisis the bridegroom's family faced was wine running out. Embarrassing, but not exactly life-threatening. Yet, when he was alerted to the need, Jesus responded. What's more, he responded in a surprising and unexpected way. Mary didn't know what Jesus would do in this situation. 
She left the outcome in his hands, knowing, because she knew her son, he'd do the right thing. She trusted him. And sometimes it's really hard to have the patience to wait for an answer. And in this, in this story, it was almost instant. As I've said in the story, God involved the servants in answering the need. Which reminds me, have you thought about Bob's question from last week? He asked you, have you heard the voice of God calling you to do something, to be something? Possibly to play a part in helping someone in a particular way. You might be the answer to someone's prayer. Or maybe even your own. No worry or concern or failure is too insignificant to bring to God. In his book, Soul Fuel, Bale, Bear Grylls, world-renowned adventurer, and Bob tells me the chief scout, writes about when people ask him about his achievements, such as reaching the top of Mount Everest or surviving a jungle, things they think are successes. The truth is that for him, behind every summit, every achievement that makes a news headline, there's a string of failures, struggles, doubts and fears. So then, where does his strength come from? In his words, any strength I have comes when I'm on my own, on my knees. Bear Grylls takes everything to God in prayer. He goes on to say that all that Jesus ever wanted to share was love. This love is there to hold us, guide us, strengthen and rescue us. And this love flows from the relationship God has with each one of us as his precious children. One day, as we heard in our Revelation reading, God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain. A new world from death, resurrection, transformation. And so let's remember that as we bring our requests to God, he has the power to transform them from water into wine. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you for your first sign, a miracle of grace, generosity and compassion, a pointer to your work in our world, a world that longs for hope, new life and transformation. Amen. Why not share your experience of prayer with, with us? Does it make any difference at all in your life? We'd love to hear from you. And of course, the obvious choice for a hymn to follow this reflection is what a friend we have in Jesus.